Today we're going to look at how to interpret dot plots and use dot plots to find the mean, median, mode, and range from a set of data. The dot plot here shows us the number of books read by students in the class. The dot plot tells us that four students read one book. That's why there are four dots over the number one. Four students read two books. Four students read three books. Five students read four books. Two students read five books and four students read six books. To read a dot plot, you count the number of dots over each number. In this case, that number of dots tells you how many books each student read. So to find the mean, median, mode, and range here, what we wanna do first is make a list of the values shown in the grid. So my list has four ones, four twos, four threes, five fours, two fives, and, six, and four sixes. To find the mean, what I did was I added up all of those numbers and I got 78. Altogether, there are 23 values here. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that means there were 23 kids in this class, right? Well, 78 divided by 23 is 3.39 and that's rounding to the nearest hundredth. So that would be the mean of this data. The median is just the number in the middle. So in that case, in this case, that's three. There's 11 numbers to the right and 11 numbers to the left and three is right in the middle. If I had two numbers in the middle, I would have added those two numbers together and divided by two. The mode is the number that occurs the most. And in this case, that's four. I can tell that four is the mode because it has the tallest bar in my dot plot. It's also the number that shows up five times in my list. Now to do the range, I'm gonna subtract the largest value minus the smallest value. So in, that case, in this case, that is six minus one, and that's five. So my median was three, my mode was four, and my range is five, and the mean we circled before was 3.39, three and 39 hundredths. Now you try it. Pause the video and see if you can find the mean, median, mode, and range of the dot plot on the left, which shows the number of minutes spent reading. All right, let's go over the mean first. If you were to add up all of these numbers, you would get 780. Now, there are 15 kids in this class. There are 15 dots there. So we want to do 780 divided by 15. The median is going to be the number in the middle, and in, that, in this case, that's 50. There are seven numbers before 50 and seven numbers after 50, so our median is 50. Our mode is also 50, since that one occurs four times. It has the highest bar. And our range is 65 minus 40, which is 25. So there's your mean, median, mode, and range. Good job. So now that we've talked about how to use dot plots to find the mean, median, mode, and range of a set of data, let's talk about different ways to interpret data from a dot plot. So this one shows us quiz scores from a class. And here we're just asked some questions about it. So question one says, what percent of the students who made an 82 or higher made an 84? And then there's some guidance here to help us figure that out. Let's look at the picture over here on the right. Well, what I notice in the picture is that the red bubble, those are the kids who have an 82 or higher. There are eight dots inside that red bubble. Now the students who made an 84, there are two of them, right? So eight students made an 82 or higher. We're gonna count these six and these two, because the ones in the blue bubble also made an 82 or higher. And then two students made an 84, and those are the two that are also in the blue bubble right there. Okay, so we had two students who made an 84, eight who made an 82 or higher. We wanna know the percent of the students who made an 82 or higher who made an 84. Okay, so that's gonna be two out of eight equals x out of 100. I will simplify this a little bit and rewrite it as one over four equals x over 100. That's allowed because I divided both the numerator and the denominator by two. That doesn't change my value. And now I can 
use this multiplicative relationship here to see how these two related fractions, um, four times 25 equals 100. So then one times 25 would equal X. That means X is 25. So 25% of the students who made an 82 or higher made an 84. All right, let's look at question two together and then I'm gonna let you try question three. So question two says, what percent of the students made a score higher than 82? So higher than 82 means they had to make an 83 or greater. That's these students right here in our red bubble. Um, so there's five of them, right? So there were five students who scored higher than an 82. How many students are there in total? Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there are 15 students in total. So in total there are 15 students and five students scored higher than 82. So we can follow the same process we used in question one to figure out what percentage that would be. Last time I used a multiplicative relationship in my proportion to solve it and this time I'm just gonna use my cross products. All right, so using my cross products, 100 times five is 500 and 15 times x is 15x. To figure out what x is, I need to divide both sides by 15. So let's do that. So you can see over here, I have 33.3 repeating. So I'm gonna say 33.3% and put my bar over my three to indicate that that is repeating forever and ever and ever. Okay, so why don't, we've, we've done one and two. How about you guys try question three? Pause the video and give it a shot. All right, so our ratio is three to 12. And you could, if you wanted to, write that as one over four. I'm gonna write it as one over four here for my final answer. But anything that you have that equivalent to that will work. You could have also written it like this with a colon, or you could have actually written one to four. And if you used three to 12, that's right too. Those are all acceptable answers.